What I have right here is a Blaupunkt RTV 925, which is identical to a uh, Panasonic NVFS 88. Um, I saw this unit standing on the side of the road on my way to uni this morning, and uh, I thought to myself, like, God damn it, I'm on foot and I'm really pressed for time, so I cannot save it. When I came back, like, three hours later, it was still standing there, but... It had started raining quite heavily in the meantime, and it had already been rained on for an hour at that point. But I ran home and grabbed my car and got it home. Um, visually not in a bad shape, of course I did clean off most of the dirt that came on from uh, the weather. Um, I'm gonna let this dry for a bit more. I'm gonna look at the power supply if that's functional. The unit doesn't seem to be in a bad condition, like in general, but... Um, I'm figuring there must be a reason why this was thrown out. And it's just my luck because today happens to be um, the people that usually collect the bulky waste um, from our local uh, well, waste company uh, were on strike today. That is really good timing because I happen to find this. And people say Friday the 13th is unlucky. <laughs> Making progress on this NV um, FS88 machine here. I have now let the machine dry for two days. I now took out the power supply and I've checked it and the power supply is completely functional which was good news. The bad news is afterwards I decided to check the main board for shorts on the on the power supply input on all of the voltage rails towards ground and there happened to be a short between 14 volts unregulated and ground 20, 23 ohms or so and I started unplugging modules and I saw that the unregulated 14 mods went to the um, the servo pack, which is this. And as soon as I unplugged that, the short went away. I then went over to my Blaupunkt RTV920, which is an NVFS100 clone, which has the same power supply. And I checked uh, the resistance between unregulated 14 volts and ground over there. And that was only about 12k or so. So then I knew this is uh, erratic behavior. And then I checked the unregulated 14 volt input on this board. There are three of them. I checked each and single one of them towards ground. And none of them were shorted, which was really weird. So I double checked, I plugged the, the servo pack back in and the short came back. So I looked in the uh, schematic where that actually goes. And it goes here. Unregulated 14 volts, and this is a little coil that goes to motor reg. So I trace that to the um, servo section in the main board. And sure enough, on this pin header here, there was a short between motor reg and ground. So I checked this plug here, and that goes, that wire goes to the um, cylinder control board. And I unplugged this, and the short went away which means the short is over here on the cylinder control board which is really bad news and I'm gonna show you why it's this and this is completely unplugged now and I checked on this IC here I, and there is a short that's rubbish because I need to get this out somehow I've never had to take this apart completely I'm lucky right, I have the head drum um, have to be very careful with this so we don't harm the actual heads. And to remove this PCB, I have to desolder these pegs here. Uh, they go to a metal base. As you can see, I undid all these points. Over here, over here, over here, and over here. Let's see if we can get this board. Out. Perfect, we have a board. So right here, the C11, this capacitor, I desoldered that, hoping that it would be the cause of the um, of the short. But it's not, so I desoldered this IC, this um, cylinder driver. All right, here's the IC. It's an AN3815K, and we shall see if the short is still there. Well, color me flabbergasted, the short is still there. Even though the chip is not installed anymore. Interesting. I just noticed this... Hmm. 
Looks a bit weird. Oh, it's gone. I am so glad it's actually not that um, icy. No, I just need to get that part replaced. Easy. Hello. All right, let's go. All right, so what I have here is not only the thermistor, as you see on the bottom here, got the thermistor, but I also bought a whole bunch of caps um, to redo this power supply because I know how eccentric these power supplies are, especially with regards to the capacitors. These aren't Japanese brand capacitors like Panasonic or whatever, um, but these are fairly expensive um, low ESR types. The reason for that is that for a trash pick machine, before I know the exact condition that the heads are in, I'm not really willing to in in invest that much cash into rebuilding it. While I was at it, I also got a new can of this, Contact Chimmy Video 90, which is a special cleaning solution for uh, magnetic heads. Well, here's the power supply and we're gonna rebuild it. Um, I'm gonna replace all the capacitors except for this big filter capacitor here because these don't, usually don't go bad and these are also hideously expensive. Um, what I will say, however, is that um, between the time when, you know, the NVFS 100 and the uh, NVFS 90 and such were made and this unit, they changed something about the starter capacitor, the 1 microfarad 400 volt capacitor in here, which you can see right over here, this capacitor. Um, this notoriously goes bad on, on, on these older Panasonic supplies. These two um, professional machines have it. And... Um, Literally no machine I've worked on had the uh, one microfarad capacitor any good uh, Which resulted in the machine simply not starting or the power supply simply not starting after it's been sitting off the mains Disconnected from the mains for a while These bad capacitors all had like a, a grey um, sleeve Which made it look really old and bland and outdated But this one actually looks like it's supposed to be something fairly heavy duty It does seem to have retained its value at least the replacement, while lower in value, does have quite a considerably lower ESR, so I'm just going to replace it. Well, look what I found. Do you see this? This cap has leaked, and so has the other identical one here. As you can see here, it's clearly leaked onto the board. Whatever. It's going to be replaced now, and that'll be the end of it. Well, I suppose it's time to test this power supply. Well, there doesn't seem to be any explosions. So let's test a few voltages. From 15 downwards, uh, regulated 5 is 5. Non-switched 5.3. Very good. Regulated 12.3. Bang on. 12.305. That's actually the closest I've had on any machine. Unregulated 45, it's a tad low, but maybe that's because there's no load on it. Unregulated 14, it's 14.2, that's good. Unregulated minus 8. That's minus 7.8, that's completely fine. And the first one is non-switched 12. Perfect! This power supply is in perfect condition. Let's pop it in and see what we can do. Wow! I cannot believe it actually. Like, I literally cannot believe it. It beeps? It actually beeps, dude. Holy oh, shit. <laughs> See if it will load. It doesn't load, it doesn't spin the drum. I actually feel a little bit silly because I forgot to plug that plug back in that I disconnected to check if the short goes away. So, let's try again. Three, two, one. Well, it certainly didn't blow up. Whoa, hello. Head drum spins, it loads, holy shit it plays, wow.
That is pretty amazing. Hi-Fi audio works. Look at that. Actually, no, it doesn't. It worked for a brief second. But... It's a result I can live with, which means... Oh, Hi-Fi audio just got back. Dude, this is amazing. Trash big unit, and it's working. Holy shit. Right. That's it for part one, I guess. Unit turns on, and it works. Um... Guess we'll go on service it a bit more and see if we can get some decent picture out of it. See you later.